So we are going to learn two things over here. The firstly, we will see how do you use content query web part to roll up the content from coming from various different sites in inside a site collection. And secondly, we will see how do you beautify the output that is coming out. So by default, the output of the content query web part is not that beautiful. So we can beautify it using the XSLT extensible style sheet language transformation. And we will see how do we use that in this video. So this web part allows you to roll up the content from anywhere inside your site collection. So in today's demo, we will pull data from various lists across different project sites and create dashboard using the content query web part. Finally, we will learn how to beautify this output using the XSLT to have the above table structure. So to show content query web part in action, we will be using this site collection. Consider this as a department site which consists of various project sites inside it. And each project site basically has uh, different uh, issues. So they are captured into custom issue lists. So we have custom issue lists inside each of these project sites. So right now the issue lists look like this. So they, these are tracked over here. And uh, similarly for the other site project B also we are having some issues uh, list. So this is a custom issue list uh, for project B. So there are different projects that they are having their own set of issues which we are tracking on their own custom list. So the place where content query web part comes very useful is that in for example somebody wants to see a dashboard of various issues into a single place. So you may not want to go into each and every project to see the issues but you want a consolidated report of all the issues at one single place. So how does this content query web part work is that it works on the common set of content types or common set of lists that are there and it, it fetches the data from those set of content types or fetches the data from those set of lists and it displays it up and rolls it up onto the top level side. So to see this in action, how does it rolls up uh, this list information? Uh, let me show you what this list type is. So if you see, if you go into the list settings, you see this is a issue content type. So the content type is issue. For project A also the list content type is issue. So this project has two issues, project A while project uh, B, uh, if you see their issue register, they have one list. So to roll up that content, you can click on settings and you can cl click on edit page. Once you click on edit page, you can insert a web part from here. So the web part is content roll up. You will find the web part called content query or content search but for this demonstration I'm using content query. So for some people this content query web part will not come up. So how do you make sure that this web part is there actually? You need to activate a feature on your site collection level. So if I go and show you under site settings. So if you see man site collection features, you will see that there is a feature called uh, SharePoint server publishing infrastructure. So this feature has to be activated if you are not seeing this web part but for my case I have already activated it and if I go back to this developer site I go into site settings and I go into edit page and then I insert web part content roll up content query and add this I need to click on this edit web part to edit the parameters so over here in the query parameter I need to show from where this what is the source of the information that I'm trying to pull. So for this case I'm trying to pull information from the whole site collection and everything below it and uh, show items what what is the list type. So you can have various different list types like you can have contacts, customers, calendars. So for me it is a custom list that I have created which is the issue list and once I'm there inside it you can choose the content type. So I have uh, various different content types. For my case, it is list content type. And then what kind of list content type it is? It is a issue list content type. So I have chosen the issue as a content type. Now, once I select this, uh, there is some things you have to set up in the presentation part as well. So you just click on apply. So you may get this error that it is unable to save some of the properties. So basically what happens? In the presentation, there is some fields which are not part of your list. So they may start, they by default use these things. So uh, it may give you some error. So just remove that particular part which you don't need and then click on apply and then click on OK. And if you see that the content is now being rolled up from 
all the different uh, sites within this site collection so if you click if you go back over here this issue register is has web part is not working so this is the one issue and the other one was at footer issue and page not found which is page not found and footer issues currently if you see the items that are dis getting displayed is just mere the title field of those particular items what if you want to show other fields what if, if you want to have a nice table layout if you want to have some borders some headers all those information are not getting displayed so you can uh, quickly uh, change the ui of this this uh, content roll up that is happening you need to use xslt and how do you go about doing is if you click on this edit page where this has to be changed so if you click on edit web part it will show you this presentation option under the style section you will see that there are different styles that you find over here so you have image on left title and description title only but merely all the options talk about title and some other options like description what if if you have lot of other options like in our issue register you have lot of other fields to display so like you have issue status priority description all these fields to display what if if you want to show all those so you have to change the accessibility that is attached to this particular section and uh, this XSLT can be found in if you want to go to site content style library under the style library XSL style sheet and these XSL style sheets are for different different places now item style sheet is the one that we are looking for right now this is the one that impacts the content query web part how the items are getting displayed so once you have checked out this file go ahead and download it from here by this link and once you have downloaded it you can open it in any editor for my case i have already downloaded this file over here and i will be opening uh, this using uh, vs code editor you can open it in notepad or any other editor that you have now if i uh, show you how this xsl file looks like so let me format this and if i show you this xsl file you will see that there are a lot of uh, different uh, XSL templates. So these are the templates that drives the UI part. So we will be creating one of these templates. So if you see there are a lot of different templates that are already defined over here, but uh, most of those templates will not be of much use for you because uh, the UI part out of these templates doesn't look that nice. So what I would recommend is you create your own template. What I have created done is I have created a step by step guide for you. So if you see this learning module that I have created uh, that shows you how do you go about creating your own template. So let me show you first. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to copy this uh, particular uh, top section, this XSL template section, just copy the top and the bottom part over here. So what, that's what I have done in the step one. I have copied this template and I will be placing that at the bottom. Uh, you need to provide a name to this template. So right now I provided issue dashboard as the name. So this is the template and this is the name. The same name can be copied into the style portion over here. Then you need to provide the structure of your content and on how you want to display the UI. So for my case, I want to pull the content from a issue, issue list which is a custom list. So what I will be doing is I will be creating a tabular structure where it will show you the all the uh, headers and then it will show you the data be beneath it. So I will copy this tabular structure from here. So let me copy this structure and I will paste it on this particular place. So this is the structure that we just created. Now this is uh, having some header portions and uh, which, which is the head part where I will just write issue name, issue status and issue description and the content portion is this one where I will be creating some placeholders the syntax like XSL value of select is equal to title XSL value of select is equal to issue status so these are these are the statements that you need to write to create the placeholders how they work I will let you know in some time but don't give space over here while you are creating the placeholders that's the point to note so once you once you are done with it just save this thing and then you go back just upload this file back again into the system and once you have uploaded it rep uh, say replace so once it is replaced just refresh the page over here and then click on edit this page and then edit this web part and in the presentation side you will see that you will start seeing the new xsl template that you just created so issue dashboard is the one that we just created just select this template and you see that this is 
automatically providing you the title issue status but issue status is not the one that we want and we want issue status as this one this is the internal field name and what i mean by internal field name i will let you know and this is the description this is the due date and this is the assigned to so i know these things i know the column name so that i'm that's just changing for you right now and then you can say okay so see this is the output that has started coming in so there are some columns whose output are not coming in so we will have to see why if you see that the comment section is not coming up i've just kept the name description but it is still not coming up if i go to this list settings you will see the name of the columns go to the column sections in the list settings so description was one of the column that was uh, not getting displayed so how do you get the internal field name so either you can click on this field or you can even hover on it to see the uh, internal name at the left hand side corner of your uh, screen or you can click on this field and you will see that uh, there is this field name that is coming up on the url part so the comment is the internal name for this field so instead of description we'll place the word comment over here also if you notice that the task due date was not coming up instead of due date i will place it task due date and i will just say okay and now that ui looks better than before and it is displaying all the data that you want to display but if you notice that there the header portion is repeating again and again this portion should not repeat multiple times it should be only displayed once so for that writing this statement there are these are the if conditions so xsl if conditions are also there if the count of preceding siblings are equal to zero so if it is zero means that is the first item there are no siblings in it so before the tr tag you can just paste this condition to check if the siblings are zero so now if i go upload this xslt file again and then if i refresh it you will see that now this is appearing for one time only now one more thing that you would have noticed is that right now we don't have any link so that we can access those items how do you have those hyperlinks over here so that you can access that particular link item so for doing that so if i go to some other templates and if you see that there is a safe link url so safe link url is the url of uh, portion where we will be getting the hyperlink field or the url portion to that particular list item so i will just copy this particular item from here and i will be copying this thing before the table section so i will just copy this safe link url so this is a variable that we are creating so this is how we create a variable so you can create any kind of variable and do some calculation functions over here and the result of the calculation function can be accessed using the name that you provide to the variable so right now we are we are formulating the url field and uh, this url field is now uh, passed on to this safe link url which i will be accessing over here before the title title keyword so i can have this href tag uh, for just having this safe link url field i will be closing this href tag so now what will be happening is that you will be seeing hyperlink will get created so i will just upload this xslt back so once i have uploaded this back and if you refresh this particular page you will see that the text are turned into the hyperlink so if i click on the text it opens this particular uh, list item so you can see all other fields that are not right now getting displayed on to your dashboard but you can see them directly going into that particular list item so now you would have noticed the structure is proper and we are seeing all the fields that we want to see on this particular dashboard but the ui is still not that great so how do you make or how do you add css to this particular ui is something we want to see now I, what i have done is already i have added some ids and class tags on to this table structure the only thing that is left to do is add a add the style sheet so for doing that i have uh, created these styles i will be copying this style just above uh, table tag so once i have added these styles uh, save it upload this uh, back into the style library and once you are done and if you refresh it you will see that how beautify how beautiful it is so the last thing that i want to show you using this xsl template is that how do you format this date time maybe you want to show it in uh, ddmmyy format so let us go back into your uh, XM, xsl file if you go to the column where we are having the task due date so we have to format this so there there is a format date time command so this format date time this thing can be run uh, if you apply this particular schema on your xsl file so before you run this thing or this method you need to 
have this uh, schema referred on the top of your uh, uh, temp XSL template. Uh, so this is how we place it on the top. And once you have placed it, you will be referring it with this word over here. So like like these XSL are being referred using this one. Similarly, this D, uh, DWR, D, D, DWRT will be the word that will be used to access this particular whole schema structure. And I will show you what this command does. So if you go at the bottom, if you see replace this task due date with this particular thing. Now if you see this, what does this do? This call this particular format date time where you pass the uh, particular uh, column or the field and you just change the format to DDMMYY format. Now once again save this file, upload it back onto your uh, style library. Then you can just refresh over here to see the due date time getting changed into DDMMYY format. So this is how you modify the schema, the structure of your uh, content uh, that is coming up out coming out of the content query web part. I hope you would have loved this video. Do let me know your feedback in the comment section below. And uh, about this XSL file, I will provide this whole uh, XSL that I have written in the description uh, section below this video. So you can just grab that XSL from there itself and uh, do let me know your feedback and until next time happy coding